What's up guys? Today we are riding this wave and we are going to be ranking every Fire Emblem in the entire series. Now as a master of Fire Emblem, this is of course an objective ranking and there can be no debate as to the results of this tier list. No real need to go any further with it than that, so let's just go ahead and jump in. Fire Emblem, Shadow Dragon, the game that started it all. In this game you take control of Marth, the Altean prince who has been forced out of his homeland. You must warp your way successively to each and every throne so that a small girl can defeat a dragon god. Later games in the series would improve on the gameplay introduced in this one. However, the remakes do add some fairly interesting ideas. And without this game, there would be no Fire Emblem. B tier. Next up, Fire Emblem, new mystery of the emblem. An improvement in every way over the previous entry, Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon. However, one problem. Those boneheads over at Nintendo of America left all the text in Japanese. I can't follow the story at all. Best I can tell it's a little something like this. Once again you take control of Marth, Prince of Altia. He must walk his way to each successive throne and seize so that a small child may defeat a dragon god. Despite all the improvements over the previous century, the fact that I can't understand anything knocks this one down a rank in my book. C rank. Next, Fire Emblem Revelation. Hold on. Alright. Next up, Fire Emblem Blazing Sword, the game that started it all. In this game, you take control of Roy and his friend Marth, who now uses an axe. You must complete a wide variety of objectives in order to defeat the sinister Nurgle and his right-hand girl, Sonya. This is where characters truly started to develop a lot more on their own. For example, take Sonya, Nurgle's accomplice in all this. At first, she just seems like a manipulated person, but if you read deeper into the backstory, you find that she has fled from the land of Valencia to escape the clutches of her father, who has gone mad with power. In the end, it turns out that the Fire Dragon was behind it all. Other games in the series would continue to improve upon the formula, but without this game, there is no Fire Emblem. A tier. Come on. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's a little better. Fire Emblem Birthright. I mean, it's right in the title. The B is capitalized and everything. B tier. Fire Emblem Shadows of Valencia. Objectively the best game in the series. S tier. Fire Emblem, Binding Blade. You once again control Roy, who has now become much younger thanks to the dragon blood flowing throughout his veins. You must be rescued to each of the successive thrones on your way to defeat the Mad King Zephiel, who wishes to rid the world of humanity thanks to their many flaws. Once again, it turns out the dragons were actually behind it all, so Roy must now take his overpowered sword to go defeat them. This stops the second coming of winter, thereby preventing all of Aleve from turning into Alaska. B tier. Fire Emblem Fates Conquest. The pair of mechanics as compared to Awakening have seen a lot of refinement in the time between the two games. Introducing concepts such as attack stance and guard stance really allows for a lot more flexibility in your strategies and a lot more reliability as well. Most of the characters in this game are very well balanced and perfectly usable on any endgame team regardless of your skill level. Although it does remove weapon durability, the systems in place work in context of the game itself, with the only real notable flaw being the forging system and its inaccessibility depending on which resources you get in the My Castle feature. Speaking of which, there were a large number of online features in this game that allowed players to customize their own gaming experience to their own needs. Although the story itself is not great, there has been a great deal of care placed into emphasizing the gameplay itself through map design, enemy placement, enemy stats, all of which are perfectly reasonable and able to be overcome with proper strategy. Perhaps one of the best games in the entire series in terms of gameplay. Despite its many flaws in other aspects. Great soundtrack. Fun game to play. Friendly to both newcomers and veterans alike. D's for Camilla. Fire Emblem Thracia 776. Didn't have time to play the 775 prequels. F tier. Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. In this game you must put up with Micaiah, the silver haired maiden. Her special abilities allow her to heal any and all wounds, but none of that matters. Eventually, she is replaced by Marth, who shows up to kick the final boss's ass in a spectacular fashion. Your goal in this game is simple. You must defeat Ashira, the god who is not a dragon for once. Due to the many faults of humanity, she is choosing to pass her judgment upon the world. She does this by turning everyone you know and love into stone, and presumably eventually plans to turn all of Telius into Alaska. Marth and Micaiah must team up alongside the help from Micaiah's pet bird, Yoon who, as it turns out, has a special ability to power up your entire team in order to better take on the forces of God. Overall, a pretty decent game, but it didn't sell very well, so I must be missing something. C tier. Fire Emblem, Sacred Stones. F-E-S-S. -S. Makes sense to me. 
All right, what do we got? Fire Emblem, Path of Radiance. That's an easy one. I love a good origin story. This time, we once again take control of Marth as he witnesses his own father murdered before his eyes. He must then let Titania kill every enemy in his past so that he may take his revenge upon the Black Knight, the man who murdered his own parents in cold blood. Along the way, you will meet men, women, beast men, beast women, and happen to take out a tyrannical ruler along the way. Not a bad game at all, but clearly inferior to the likes of Sacred Stones and Shadows of Valencia. Path of Radiance. C tier. Fire Emblem Awakening, the game that started it all. In this game, you control Marth, Girl Marth, and newcomer Robin. Robin is an amnesiac who cannot remember anything about themselves, their past, what foods they like, or what a fashion sense is. Robin must kill every enemy in the game on their way to nowhere in particular in order to defeat the fell dragon god Grima. In the end, it turns out that Grima was Robin, and Robin was Grima the whole time. Later games will get the gameplay better, but without this, there is no Fire Emblem. A tier. Fire Emblem 4, Genealogy of the Holy War. I hate biology. F tier. Alright, so there you have it. Every Fire Emblem game in the series ranked objectively. See ya.